Hi ladies, it's Mae Larson here and today we're going to be doing a wall hanging utilizing this wooden hanger um, that I purchased from Creating with Details and I'm going to be using some folk art chalk paint and it's the sheep, sheep skin, the buttercream wax, the antiquing wax and the clear wax by buttercream so the first thing we're going to do and i've done a tutorial on um some of my wall hanging so if you want to look at some of my other vi video tutorials on how i created um the wall organizer there's a tutorial on how i also stenciled the hanger so you can check that out um but basically what i'm just going to do is i'm going to paint this entire hanger and it's an unpainted raw wood hanger so we're just gonna paint it with some of this chalk paint and then we're gonna come back with the buttercream the clear wax and we're gonna apply that on once that is dry we will come back and um, a little bit I'm not sure if I'm gonna stencil it but if I was gonna stencil I would stencil first and then I would apply the clear wax and then the antiquing I'm not sure yet if I want to stencil I haven't decided yet if I want to take that extra step I might I might we'll see we'll see how that goes okay we're just going to play around right now if I decide to do that then and this is a pretty big um, hanger and these are available like I said at the Korean with detail store and they are um, I think four dollars a piece which is a good deal for um, wall hanging now you will need at least um, your glue gun and a sewing machine if possible if you don't want to sew that's okay you can glue down um, your fabric around this here um, and I will be gluing it down first here around the bottom but I do like to sew down because I take the felt to make it thicker and I will sandwich the felt in between the fabric that I have selected so, we're just going to do this all the way around until it's completely painted and I'm getting paint all over me, which was not the intention, but that is always common with me. Now, another thing that you can do, you can definitely, let me move my paint over here because I'm reaching over and I don't want to get it on my clothes. Um, another thing you can do is if you wanted to give it a really nice vintage crackled look, you can apply um, a really nice thick coat of this chalk paint onto this wooden hanger, then apply a um, coat of crackle, let it sit for a little bit, and come back in with another coat of the chalk paint now if you wanted to go really crazy what I've done in the past is I take the um, the darker color like if I wanted some brown to pop out in my crackle I take like brown I put it under the first as the first base then um, I come back with the crackle let it dry and then come in with the white color on top or whatever color I'm going to use for the top coat um, and then you can see the crackle effects with the brown it's really good a good effect as well so that's another idea you can take your sand block and sand it down get it really nice and rough um, so those are just really good ideas for you to distress this hanger and make it really old and vintage. Now what I'm going to be doing is a Christmas wall hanging. And there is an image that I purchased. It was actually eight and a half. I need to roll this sleeve up. Eight and a half by um, 11. 
and I think I paid like three fifty for that sheet. Um, I will put the link below. It was either three fifty or four fifty. I didn't pay more than that on my images, so. I will make sure I will link that below so you're not overpaid on some of these images. So go here. And okay, so we're going to let that sit and then um, I will decide if I want to apply a stencil or not. Okay, so I decided to stencil and I'm using some black acrylic paint and a stickle brush here. And I'm just going to take this stencil that I picked up at, um, normally typically you want to take it and tape it down somehow or another. I can't tape it in the the way this hanger is so I'm just going to carefully hold it and I'm just going to pounce on it be careful not to move my stencil and then move over here The shape of the hanger is what makes it really hard. I got enough paint on this brush that I really don't need to add more paint to it. Holding it carefully, making sure it's all nice and steady for me. If it bleeds in, that's all right because I just. that off for me please mommy here this too because I'm not going to need it thank you baby mm -hmm. all right so then I'm going to take my heat gun I'm going to go ahead and heat set that to make sure you have like a sanding paper or something to distress this a little. I'm just using my Prima distressor tool here. Um, just kind of beating it up a little. Let's around the words. Wear and tear. Okay. Once you have that, you're going to take your buttercream, take a, a little rag, make sure you dust off all the dust from when you sanded it down. I already had one here. Clean your area up. Okay. And then take your brush and apply um, a thin coat of your wax, clear wax. That way when you apply your um, your stain, it'll come on and wipe off really smoothly. The way I know that my clear wax has dried, it's, it's not sticky anymore. If it feels sticky or tacky, it's still a little wet, let it dry up more. Okay. Let's 
go ahead and do that front and back. dry and then come back with your stain and the hanger be ready for the best part of it which is the decor of the wall hanging okay all right so it's already dried and what I want to do now is um, take my brush and yes my brush is kind of grody because it does get a lot of usage and I'm dipping it into my antique buttercream wax and I'm just going to do some brush strokes here and there and my rag's a little bit damp so I'm just going to spread that in. Now if you have some baby wipes, I love my baby wipes to do this but I did happen to run out. so. And I like the grunginess of that. And just wipe it. And wipe it up really good. Do the same thing in the back. Like I said, my, um, my towel is a little bit damp so that I can wipe it off a little easier. it easier. It really does. And it makes it really old and vintage and really distressed. Yeah. There you go. There's that. Now I want to come back with the I'll let this sit for a little bit and I'm going to come back with the fabric that I'm going to choose. Okay, so our hanger is already painted and distressed. And if you can see from here to here, you have to measure that out really good. And it's about 15 inches long or wide, sorry. And you want to make sure your fabric is about that same, if not a little bit less. So mine is 14 and a half inches wide. And then I cut a piece of felt that is 13 and about an eighth inch wide. And I decided to make my wall hanging um, 23 inches and a half long. So it's um, 14 and a half by 23 is the fabric and I have two pieces as you can see and I chose this really thick canvas one that I love so much and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich this in in between those two and I'm going to take it to my sewing machine I'm going to run a stitch straight across and then I'm going to leave make sure I leave about two inches on the top because those two inches are going to go wrapped around your hanger just like so like that okay so about two inches you're going to leave on the top so that you can wrap around your hanger so we'll be back 
Okay, so another tip that you can do is you can take um, some glue sticks and you can glue down your felt down so that when you're running it through your machine it's a lot easier. Um, and then you're going to take, once you have that down, and go ahead and take your safety pins or your pins and just pin it down, all the way down. And again, we're going to make sure we go all the way down and over with our sewing machine. You can also glue it if you want. Um, I chose not to uh, just because it's a personal preference for me. Um, it's almost like a satisfaction to know that it's a finished piece. So, But you can definitely, definitely glue it down if you want. If you don't have a sewing machine, take out your glue gun and just sew it down. Um, that's not a problem. But I'm just going to go in, put my pins in, and then take it to my sewing machine and run it through for a really quick stitch. It's not a, it's not a really hard thing to do. Once you have that done, um, remember you have to leave at least two inches. This is the image I have selected. Um, it's something that I purchased from Etsy and that's going to go like that. And it's a pretty big piece and I did print it on fabric so we're going to work around the image. We'll be back. So I have it entirely sewn around as you can see there and now I'm going to take and take about two inches from the top and we're going to do it and wrap it in just like that and you can put this part in the back um, but because I'm going to be putting some trim here to decorate that a little bit more um, we're going to go this way so we're going to go ahead and it's about two inches in and you can measure that just to make sure to double check um, Make sure you're even on both sides. Alright, once you have that done, that's about two inches there. You can go ahead and take your glue gun and glue that down. There's plenty of glue in there, and I like to double check and make sure it's completely evened out. And you can start on the ends, and that's about so. And just go in. And get plenty of glue. Get plenty in there, ladies. Plenty. So it doesn't come undone, okay? Put my measuring tape away. Again, I'm going to go in here and just make sure I have it really good. It's very... And it's not going to come out, okay? That is the main part. The main objective here is to make sure it does not come undone. Okay? All right, so now we have that, and um, our image is right here, and that will go just like that, there, and I did print on the wrong side at one time, I'm going to peel this back, and we can use doilies to put in the back, laces, all the beautiful stuff that you want to use for this, you can use it. <clears throat> and we're going to probably center that around there, and I want to center that first before I decorate anything. So I'm going to push this up this way, make sure I am on track. I'm going to take the image, and I'm going to glue it right straight to a piece of felt. Um, just to get more cushion in here, since it's kind of thin. Just glue it right down on that piece of felt, then we'll go back in and we'll just trim it up. Let's 
go just like that. That gives it some ex extra padding too. Crafter's job is never done, and I hope you guys um, will follow oops, um, the next YouTube hop, which is Carol Held, and she's extremely talented. If you haven't um, stopped by her channel, please do so, um, because she is very talented, and not only is she talented, but she's a very lovely lady. So if you haven't stopped by her channel and haven't subscribed to her YouTube channel, please do so. I'm going to put her link below my video here so that you can hop on over and check out Carol. Okay, so now I'm going to trim this up. I will also put the link to this image that I purchased from Etsy. Now this is a pretty big image and it was very, see how big it is and how colorful um, there's so many details in it, but look how big it is. It's eight and a half by eleven. I think I paid four fifty for it. I didn't pay a whole lot, so that's an awesome deal. All right. Move this over to the side because that's recyclable for something else. Now, I had this here that I that was gifted to me, and I've been wanting to use it. I couldn't figure out what am I going to use it for. It's so beautiful, um, and it's perfect for this wall hanging. It is just really perfect. I love it. I love the way it hangs, and I might just bring it down a little so that it hangs more, but I just love it. I really do. So we're going to play around with it and get it to fit in here and it's just a perfect size too. Make sure we have it nice and straight and then we're going to start gluing it down. You can also sew it if you want to. If you choose not to, that's okay. We're gluing. Nothing wrong with that, right? And this is one of those kind of projects where you want to make sure you save some of your scraps and things like that. Just gives it a really nice, beautiful work. Okay, so I'm going to turn it this way. Hope you guys are enjoying the YouTube hop. I know we have all been having some massive fun. The sponsors have been great. They've been even um, Lou from Fernley has been joining us during the live ones, and so has Michelle Parrish from Wanta Scrap. So it's been so awesome to have the sponsors join us. Um, Amy Love from Shabby is Chic Boutique. She's been joining us in all the live shows, and so has Cam from the Vintage Emporium, uh, Shadi from Creative with Details. So it's so awesome to be able to um, enjoy them because we couldn't have done it without our sponsors. So that's really awesome that the sponsors have actually taken the time to join each and every single one of us during the live show so that's awesome so thank you thank you to all the sponsors it's awesome all right so we've worked around to gluing this down
just making sure it's all nice and done. All right, so we have that done. I'm going to turn it this way so that I can get this part down here done. that and we have an image and we have this um, extra piece of a doily from one of um, my Tussie Mussy kits so I'm thinking about laying that there and that's gonna go like that I'm thinking I'm thinking you guys know me I like to think to see how I want this to pan out um, Okay, so I am thinking, first of all, I want, I do want my doily there. I'm going to move it up a little higher so that it's noticeable. And let me move this hanger. The hanger does get in the way. Alright, so we're going to move that up just a little. Go ahead and glue that down since we know that's where we want our placement. to do these things um, in a way that I don't lose placement so that's why I kind of keep it right where it is so that I know that's where I want things. I missed the picture. I knew I had to move the picture. And you can put some cheesecloth in here just to make it even more shabbier. Um, take out all your laces that you have laying around. Um, just add layers and layers of lush, a beautiful lush. Okay, so we have that down. Now, I love this here, and it's something I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I love that. So what I was thinking about is placing my image right around so. Um, I do have some cheesecloth, so we're going to take advantage of the little bit of cheesecloth I have left. Because, you know, we got to get some cheesecloth in here. And I love the distressed look of the cheesecloth. This that character, that texture, and... It's just a beautiful touch, so we will try to incorporate some cheesecloth in here. Make it a really nice shabby chic wah hanging. And then what I'm thinking about is this trim here that's like a net. We're gonna go about there. Make sure this is evened out. Let's turn this even. Go up there. I want it to stick some of the more texture. I think the prettier it is. Personal preference, ladies. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start gluing. I think I think that's good right there, and I'll cut out the cheese claws cloth as I go along. And. Way. 
I wish I knew how to put some music into my videos. I don't know how to do that. Um, and I don't want to violate any of YouTube policies, but see all these wonderful videos that has music and I wish I knew how to do that. down. I'll leave that there hanging out still because, just because. <laughs> All right, pull some of that out to snag it. And then we're going to go here and refuel real quick. And one thing about me, I do not, my hands aren't sturdy anymore. Looks like I have a hot mess of a glue. My hands aren't sturdy. Glue that down. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Kind of spread it open. That's a good thing I like about this ribbon. That you can spread it open. However you want it. Uh, we're going to go around here. And this is just another way of adding texture and elements to your project. crochet piece here left over from one of my glasses and then I'm just going to add that there to add more yumminess to it. First we got to cut that straight. Do not like it when things are crooked. Okay so we're going to go that way and again add another layer. Top of that one, just like so. And trim. So now we can go here. And I think I'm going to go up here. But before I do that, I have this, and I picked this up at um, Joanne's. I hate when they put those little pieces of tape on there. I know it keeps it from fraying, but my gosh. All right, so we're going to go find the right side of this tram. Now it's this way, so we're going to put that there. It almost looks like a little rug.
here. Not sure. When I lay that down, it kind of doesn't look so pretty. Hmm. Hmm, ladies. I think we're going to take this one down. So we're going to yank that off. Sorry. Didn't like it. I see that that's what happens. I always try to make sure before I glue that it's something that I really, but it's a good thing it's still fresh. Um, so we're going to minus that one out. We'll use that for something else. I gotta cut this here, so I'm gonna trim it off just a bit. <clears throat> so for here, we're gonna go with. I just had it. Oh, right here. Purchased this one from Mrs. Garden Grove. And she's one of our sponsors for the YouTube hop, 25 Days of Christmas Hop. Alright. Probably go down just a tad bit. Because I want it to dangle. Going in about four inches, I think that's what it is. But of course, you guys are going to have something different. Not everyone's going to have the same, but just to give you an idea, I want to cut in a way that. Okay, so you guys know me. I love to layer. So this is another trim that I had in my personal stash, and I think it'll be beautiful right here. So we're gonna trim it right there, and we are going to find another one to layer up on there because we have to have layers, ladies. There it is important. Now we have this one. And I love the difference, the variations of colors. It's good. I love it. So we're going to go with that. We're going to go with this. And I have another one that I want to put on there. Don't mind my bags. Okay, so I have decided this is how I want my layout here. So I'm going to trim okay. this piece here. Make sure that's evened out there. Save that for something else. And 
This is a Creative Details trim. I love it. All right, so here we go. So we have that one already glued down. We're going to move this one just slightly over so that it kind of falls in, right? But we have this one here as well. I got to move this up so you can see all this mess here. Okay, so we're going to kind of bring these down. To dangle in between there. Keep sliding off. The mat's not wanting to cooperate with me today. So about so. We're going to glue it down. here, my handy dandy tool. I feel like Blue's Clues with my handy dandy tool, right? Handy dandy notebook. Well, that little pink finger or pink spatula is my handy dandy tool. shot across. Alright, see? And now we're going to put this one to go right there. It falls nicely. Okay, so then we're going to go with this one, and this one will go right about so. Now this is a um, Creating My Details trim. All the other ones were from my personal stash. Or Miss Garden Grove, so let's... This is a Creating with Details trim. Very beautiful. So we're going to bring that down. It's a cotton crochet trim. I love this one. This is a really beautiful one. Really pretty shabby. a really nice look to your project. Alright. Go it down here and over here. Alright. <clears throat> and then 
one. This is a Miss Garden Grove trim. So we're going to lay that right there. I'm not going to glue down up here too much because I still am trying to decide do I want to um, do this up here? Maybe I should concentrate on that. Let's see. Let's look at that. Let's look at let's look at that a little. So I'd originally laid this down, but then after I laid it down, I'm like it really needs something up there, and I kind of like that there. It gives it a really pretty elegant look right there. So I think I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to trim it here just a little. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now this is a Joanne Fabrics trim. And we'll trim here. here I know I kind of covered up the doily which was defeating the purpose I know I know I know don't remind me because I'm silly like that sometimes but then again that's the layering effects We do have cheesecloth here, so I'm going to stretch that out. Do I want that there? So we're going to leave that one there. I do know I want the sides to be that way, and then I'm going to go ahead and I do that. You know, I just saw this one here. Let's see something before I do that. I think I'll probably go. Just wanted something there and need something there. Do I want shabby? Do I want elegance? Do I want shabby? Do I want elegance? And I like this. Okay, so we're gonna disregard this one because I like that one there. So we're gonna go with the creating with details one here. Here. Waste not, right? You guys are probably saying, man, me, but that's okay. That's all right. Could be used for another project. Why my mat's kind of slipping out of the way today. Does not want to stay in its place. And I think it's just the desktop. I think that's what it is. I blame it on a desk. This is a beautiful cream with details trim. This really is. It's gorgeous. So now we're going to go back up here because I already know I wanted this here and I've got that glued down. So we're going to trim there, lay that over there. This will go up. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, that is totally vintage. Yeah, so I'll turn this one here. And I'm gonna go just like that, and I can still see my little daily on the top like I wanted to. All right, and we're gonna stretch this one here because I want this one to 
peek out a little more. Stretch that baby out. And the cheesecloth. So it's more noticeable. Alright. So let's glue this one here. Notice I do just each individual scallop just to get the right placement on this one. Golden pole is this trim from Hobby Lobby. And I hate when they put this tape on here. I really dislike that. At least tell them not to do that because then I gotta. And then they count that as part of your yardage, right? Alright, so we're gonna lay some of those little scallops to peek through there. And this is gonna go just like that there. And I'm gonna make sure it's. in here so it doesn't come unrattled. And again, like I said, the hanger, you can purchase it from Creating with Details. Um, she's got hangers. She's got all kinds of fabulous things over there. So you guys got to check it out. Stop right on over there and see what's going on with Creating with Details. I love this single trim. It's expensive. It's in the home decor of Hobby Lobby. Um, but if you use, don't do it when it's 30%. It's kind of crazy. You gotta wait till it's like not on sale and then use your 40% coupon. That's what I normally do. And when it's not on sale, I take advantage of it. Okay, so we have that. I'm making sure it's all nice and even, all nice and straight. So we have that. <coughs> and then I can glue, <coughs> excuse me, I have the cough all of a sudden. I'm thinking about <coughs> I mean this one right on top because it's also another creating with details and it just gives more character right there. So I'm thinking about doing that. <coughs> Dear Lord. Let's snap there. 
there. And we could also put the button trim there. That would have put that would have been cuter, I think. Yeah, I like the button trim. Sorry, ladies. We're having a lot of technical difficulties today, but that's all right. You guys, I'm tired. Yeah, I like the I like the the button trim. Button trim is a Hobby Lobby trim. my favorite trim also and I buy it when it's 50% off because it's an expensive trim it's um, $8.99 and I think it's not even a uh, not even two yards it's very very expensive but when you get it at 50% off it's $4.50 and I'm always losing these I don't know why Sure, put a little dab of glue there. Okay. Trim. I may have to cut that button out. Screen goes black all of a sudden, so I gotta. All right, I want to glue down this a little bit more. So I think I'm comfortable with how this looks down here. Now we got to work on the top, and I'm losing my mat. So let's go this way. Get everything out of my way, and that's gonna go like that. Make sure it's pushed over. Okay. Quiet there for a second, lady. Sorry. Okay. All right. And go down here. And then I need to go down here. because we have plenty of glue webs like we can't live without them right definitely can't live without those glue webs okay we have all that going on there double check on here make sure that's good okay all right then we can See about doing this up here or I don't think I have enough of my button trim I wish I did well maybe I do I could put some button oh yeah 
we're going to put the button trim instead. Smack in the middle. I like creating my details one, so we're going to go right smack in the middle. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So then we're going to go in and do this here. But we can probably use this little piece here that I had already glued. So let's recycle that one. I'm going to have to go to Hobby Lobby and see if they have some of that tram on sale this week. Believe it or not, ladies, I have not gone to Hobby Lobby this week. Have not, but I do have to swing on by there tomorrow. Um, and we're going to go over here. And do the same. And I'm just going right in the middle of that one trim from Creative with Details and adding another Creative with Details trim. Right smack in the middle. Okay, and let's get this one out of the way. <clears throat> and print from Hobby Lobby, and we're going to put it in the middle of this gimp, tuck it underneath here. It's just to bring out more of that button trim on the top and some of those colors. But we're smacking it right in the middle. Make sure that's straight. And again, let's smack in the middle. Tuck it 
in. Tuck it in, tuck it in, ladies. Tuck it in. Tucking it in. Loving it. I really am. And I think it's coming out very beautiful. Look at that. Alright, so for up here, what I'm thinking about doing is adding some of this one. I don't have too much of it left, but I love it up here. And I know that you're probably thinking you're covering up. Well, no, let's do. Let's do, let's do, let's do. What are we going to do? Um. That doesn't work for me. I like shabby, but that's too much. That is way too much. Um, I do like this one. So let's keep this one out. We have this. I think we're going to go with that. And what else do I have? Tosh, I'm going to take this little vintage eyelet trim that I picked up from a hot, um, eBay lot and I'm going to first take this one trim that I picked up from Joann's and I do apologize I'm a little off the camera but I don't have a big enough work area to show you what I'm doing here So I'm just going in probably about an inch from the rod. <clears throat> I'm just going to put that crochet trim or I guess you would say a ribbon, I don't know. Ribbon, trim, lace. Well, it's not lace, but. All right, so then we're gonna trim this one up. And that's gonna go in my scrap because we're gonna use that when I come back. All right, now we're gonna lay this beautiful eyelet one right on top of there. And it's vintage. I think this was probably part of a, 
curtain or a dress, who knows, who knows, but it's very vintage and I like it, it gives it character. It's tattered, it's worn out, it's had its time, and now it's going to be used again. Alright, and then... here. Put that in there. And I might have some there, but that'll be too much because we got button, button. So we'll use this button for something else. But I do have this one, which is like a Hmm. Nope, don't care for it. Not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. We're going to go back with the Korean with details one. We're going to go with this one and finish that edge. Or let's go with the Hobby Lobby one. Yeah, let's go with the Hobby Lobby only and just kind of finish that edge off. And it's the Hobby Lobby button trim that I love so much. away. I'll fold it later. All right. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is a bow. Okay, so now we're going to do a bow. I'm going to bring out my little bow maker here. Um, this one trim here is from Creating with Details, a crochet trim. And the seam binding is also a creative detail seam binding, and I just kind of crinkled it up. And I'm just going to put it in here. We're going to make a big bow. All right. So what's of a big bow, at least. Let's move this peg. I think I want it a little bit bigger. I want it to droop. And from Deco Fun, you can buy these little pegs separately. Um, if you guys want, um, they have separate pegs from what I understand, so I'm going to be checking that out. Alright, so we're going to go in, crisscross applesauce right in between, and we'll crisscross there. And we can adjust it this way and that way and that's what I love about this bow maker that I can adjust it to suit me and let's see I don't want to use this big old piece but I have this oh this will be cute for a middle one I like finding different things to make to tie it gives it character. I don't know about you guys, I just do. And this is just a vintage crocheted piece. Isn't that pretty? Pop it out. And then we have that. And that little vintage piece just gives it really cute character. Alright. Pop it out. There we have that. 
pretty. I think so. I like it. Okay. All right, so now it's a matter of probably attaching it up here is what I'm thinking, up to the hanger. And I need to move all this mess so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so what I'm thinking about doing is attaching the bow. Let's adjust it here. What I'm thinking and that's what I'm going to go with because I like it. Alright. And there's that. And we can Definitely trim this one out just a tad bit. Oh, I just love adding these little frilly eyelet ones. The character okay so now we have this beautiful wall hanging and let me make sure I clean up all my glue webs now I had thought about um, putting a flower on here and I have this here and let me see I found the other one did I lose it is from D Barb and she is um, the Victorian shabby chic shabby chic shop I did have another one where did it go let's find it we'll be back okay so I decided not to go with the flower and just leave it just like it is because I was comfortable with how it looks and but these are the appliques from the Victorian shabby chic um, shop or the Victorian shabby shop sorry from D Barb and she's got beautiful appliques but I thought it would be too much for this one we'll, we'll leave Santa be a little bit more masculine this time around maybe next time but here is my wall hanging I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions feel free to ask and until next time bye bye